beautiful. It was not. It wasn't beautiful, Jackson. I, I didn't clap into my mic. Do it one more time. Oh my lord! All right. The prof- the real clap sync after one, three, two, one. Why would you not clap into your microphone? I was looking at my phone. So what led you to do that? So I clapped why, under the desk. I was looking at my phone. Why were phone. you looking at your phone? We're in the middle of a fucking podcast recording. How, did you, how are you looking at your phone if you clapped as well? What do you mean? I just have you it need up. two hands to clap. What? I, it's, I just have a screen up on my phone that I'm looking at, and then when you counted clap, I clapped under my desk like that. So you couldn't hear it. So the phone had nothing to do with it. Yeah, I was distracted by my phone. Thus my hands were Why were, were you distracted by your phone? It is podcast recording time. You're, you're four right. minutes late, and then you're just tw- fucking texting mid-episode? Come on. Four minutes late? I came in after you did. 5.34. I looked at the clock. I was oh, here at 5.27. I, I had the chat open. I was waiting for you to get in. You were the last one. I was in here at 5.27 before Jackson. You're literally making stuff up. Yeah, that's fair enough. He's right. <laughs> You've been caught in a lie, just like you all out there listening have been caught listening to the official podcast, the only actual podcast on the internet. If you are listening to a different podcast, you're committing piracy or fraud, or you don't know what you're doing. I, I'm Andrew. Or incontinence. Or, yeah, or you might be suffering from IBS or perhaps migraines. I'm I'm part of your host, Andrew, but to form the full Voltron of hosts, we also have Charlie, Jackson, and Kaya ready to talk about some rip-roaring topics. And I will start the ball rolling because Charlie and Kaya have been like powering up Super Saiyan style in the background, ready to unleash their fury and anger on this planet at Punisher Season 2. Go ahead, boys. <laughs> I haven't seen it. <laughs> That's quite the over-exaggeration. I have. That's why I wanted you to were, talk about it. You, I mean, you, were, you seem pretty upset by it. I'm... Okay, here's the thing. I really, really like the Punisher. I love... Because he, like, shoots people? Yeah. (laughs) That's it. That's the only reason. (laughs) (laughs) No, I like him because, yes, he's, you know, he's the murderous yet just good old lovable hero. You know, wholesome yet also smashing in people's skulls with a sledgehammer. I like him. Okay, I love John Bernthal's uh, depiction of the Punisher. I think he's actually the best Punisher. I don't think you can it can get any better. John, if if for some reason you ever somehow end up listening to this, that's pretty damn cool. I really like your Punisher. Thank you for season one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service. <laughs> Thank you for your service. I think it was really, really cool. I mean, to give you an idea of how much I like the Punisher, at least the first season, but as a character, as played by John Bernthal, I watched the entirety of Daredevil on Netflix just to get background story on all of the characters and especially the Punisher, which is at some point we guys, we uh, talked shit about Daredevil, I think after it was canceled and then we made fun of one of the fighting scenes and people gave (laughs) us shit telling us that it's actually a good show. And I want to touch on that too, because I watched it and it is, it's a good show, but (gasps) there's something... So there's something about the show that I've never seen with any other show, which is that the main character is the least interesting character in his own show. (laughs) The daredevil is a boring douche and everybody else is interesting. Everybody besides this guy, his sidekicks, the bad guys, they all have backgrounds. They all get their background stories like they... You guys know uh, the Kingpin, right? Wilson Fisk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we get yeah, to see yeah. his backstory. He's sort of a cool actor. You, he grows on you. His sidekicks. Um, he has like a secretary manager type chick and a best friend. And they have these moments that are absolutely adorable. And when you watch them, it's just you kind of get pissed off once they cut back to Daredevil fighting some generic bad guys and... <laughs> It's just dumb. The, the Daredevil is such a douche, and he's the worst friend I've ever fucking seen any any sort of media. He always fucks his friends over all the damn time. <laughs> so it's a weird show. I'm I'm actually kind of bummed it got canceled. I'll be honest. I I think what they should have done is simply kill off Daredevil and keep the show going. <laughs> <laughs> keep it running just on his friends. Yeah, just like his lawyer friends. The tribute to Daredevil or something. It's, I'll be honest, like, I would rather watch a show about Wilson Fisk and you get the, you somehow get the impression that the writers would as well because they spent entire episodes developing their backstories. Like, do you guys know uh, Bullseye? Mm-hmm. 
the he's yeah. like the Hawkeye, except he can make everything in his hands lethal by throwing them at high velocity or something. <laughs> is, so he can just it, it, is he cool. the uh, is he the sniper where he's never missed a shot That's or a dead yeah. shot? No, 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 no. Oh, That's, I'm thinking oh. I'm thinking a dead shot. Yeah, yeah never mind. Shot. Never oh. mind. It'd be so cool if he was yeah. also blind. Well, I mean, <laughs> every I, superhero should be blind to make them even cooler. I guess there's more of these types. There's like Hawkeye, Deadshot, and Bullseye. But yeah, the point is they spend like four episodes developing Bullseye's story as this psychopath who has a crush kind of sort of on a girl and he's stalking her and this and that. And I'm watching this going, this is so much more interesting than Goody Two-Shoes douchebag bad friend daredevil dipshit dumbass and his story about how he's <laughs> always fucking over his friends. It's every episode is how he's a bad friend. Basically, the second or third season is at some point his friends think he's dead for a year or something. Did we lose Kaya? No, why? I hear him. I hear him too. Yeah. Hello? Did you lose Kai? <laughs> Charlie! We lost Charlie. Yeah, what I just think happened? We lost Charlie. We lost you. Jesus, yeah, I got put into a purgatory there. That was weird. Yeah, <laughs> we you lost you on that one. Yeah, I can hear you guys now. That was super fucking weird. It like put me into a, like, a the, timeout. The Marvel Assassins came after you. Yeah. Uh, Okay, just to quickly finish why Daredevil is a douche. He's, his friends, his best friends, think he's dead for a year. He comes back, reveals that he's alive, and he tells them, I just came back to tell you that I'm dead to you. Don't come looking <laughs> for me, <laughs> you douche. And you, what a dick. He, his friends rightfully ask, like, why the fuck did you come back just to tell us that you're dead to us, that we shouldn't come look for you? And he lies and lies and goes on, and then we find out that he was lying. In fact, he only came back to f steal his friend's wallet. He is <laughs> such a douche. He needed bus fares. He's such a douche. He needed his ID to break into a prison or something, but he is such a douchebag. Season two is all about the Punisher. Like they introduced the Punisher as a character. And so the Daredevil, for those of you who don't know his backstory, he's a lawyer and he has a buddy uh, called Foggy mm -hmm. or Foggy Nelson. Yeah, yeah they're it's lawyers funny. together, right? So. Matt is like, yeah, we need to take the Punisher's legal case. We got to represent him in court. Now, keep in mind, the Punisher's case is a big deal. It's like representing Charles Manson. He's a serial killer, right? So he convinces his friends to take the legal case, and then he doesn't do anything. He doesn't show up to the court, and every single time he promises his friends, like, yeah, guys, I'm going to be there. I'm going to do the work, and I'm going to do the introductory talk, the speech, and he doesn't show up. He's such an asshole. I'm sorry to rant about Is he about busy the doing other things like fighting yeah, he's during he, that time? <laughs> you can call it fighting, but he's really busy hanging out with his ex. That's it. Oof. Yeah, he's, which is Electro. Boring story. Again, it, it's weird. The least interesting character in his own show. I'd rather... Like, they have these moments. I don't know if you guys have watched Better Call Saul, but I enjoy the lawyering and the investigation and all that sort of stuff. And when you watch Karen Page and Foggy Nelson do their lawyer investigator stuff, that's far more interesting than Daredevil throwing his little nunchucks at people or whatever the fuck Why don't you does. just watch Law and Order then if you just like law shows? Well, not that, like, not that cheesy-ish, you know. I, I don't know. It's all I'm trying to say is Daredevil is a douche. But back to Punisher, though. I, have you seen the first season, Charlie? I saw some of it. I didn't finish it, but what I saw, I really enjoyed. How much like the the first few episodes or what? I, I think I got up to like episode seven or eight. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty much the full season, isn't it? It's pretty no, close. That's half. That it has thirteen episodes. So it's pretty much <laughs> half. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A good I like the show. See, The Punisher is the, the, as a show is the opposite of Daredevil, where pretty much only the main character is interesting and you have to fast forward through everything else because they have these boring detective scenes. There's some detective called Dina Madani and they have these like 20 minute scenes where she's talking to a supervisor and it's the most generic cop talk, movie cop talk, like this is outside your jurisdiction you can't do this madani oh yeah are you gonna fire me if you're gonna fire me do it now or step out of my way it, it fuck it but season two john bernthal please if if you ever listen to this i love you but that wasn't you that wasn't you john you let people live that ain't right it ain't right that's what I wanted to talk about. I was reading up on The Punisher season two because I'm a big fan of The Punisher as a character as well. Even though I didn't finish the first season, I enjoyed what I saw. 
And apparently in season two, he lets like a child pornographer go without even yes. calling the fucking cops or anything on him. He yeah. like just he story touched him. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he must have been a big fan or something. So, so there's this whole theme about how the Punisher needs to stop killing people, right? The soul. Mm -hmm. When he's introduced he's in... Addicted. Addicted? Well, yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, addicted to killing people. Well, see, when he's introduced in Daredevil Season 2, he has this awesome moment in court where he goes, I killed those maggots because I liked it. <clears throat> Hell, I fucking loved it, right? He has this meltdown in court, which is because of Daredevil again, because Daredevil taunts him like a dumbass and fucks it up. But... <laughs> The whole we spent a whole season in Daredevil about how the Punisher needs to stop killing people, which is fine because they're so the contrast is that the Daredevil never kills anybody, right? He will not ever shut the fuck up about how virtuous he is for not killing anybody, which again, ah, such a self-satisfied smug piece of shit. But then that's not what people like me tune into the Punisher for. That's not what I want to hear when I watch the Punisher is side characters berating him for being the punisher that's why you watch him he kills people so the scene that you're talking about charlie is him the punisher and his new sidekick which is this young girl they go to this like underground hidden photo set i guess where some guy that that is run by this guy who allows kitty pornographers to use it and uh, so the Punisher is like, so you like taking photos of little kids, huh? And then he pulls a gun on the guy and the little girl, his sidekick, comes in and says, you know, I like you. I know you like killing people, but this is borderline even for you. And then somehow <laughs> this is the guy. This one's borderline out of yeah, everyone is, he's killed out of everyone. He's killed. Not just that. I mean, it doesn't make any sense in Daredevil when he's first introduced, when we first, I think, see his face clearly in light. The Punisher is in a pawn shop. And the pawn shop owner, he's trying to sell him all this illegal shit. Like, oh, yeah, I got this porn if you like. You know, I got scat porn. I got German shit porn. You know, I, I got granny milf porn if you're into that. Or if you like him younger, I also have something else. You know, she's barely 12, if you know what I mean. And at that moment, the Punisher stops and he walks back into the pawn shop, grabs a baseball bat. And, you know, the, the implication is that he beats the guy de uh, dead because he was just selling child porn yet. In season two of The Punisher, he's just letting this guy live. And I don't know why. It, it bummed me out. That's not what The Punisher is supposed to be. It's showing a character shift, a, a, a development, if you will. Which it shouldn't. Now he's a good guy. I don't, well, but, that doesn't make him that's a good not guy. good. Yeah, not in the <laughs> least. <bro. laughs> Like, well, you're, also, you're also giving a lot more subtlety to the Punisher character when they want to show him as a good guy. There's a, uh, a really, a really well-known story in the actual comics where he dies and goes to heaven and becomes a fucking assassin for God as an angel. Oh. <laughs> and that's how they show, look, he's doing good in the world. Okay, it's look, fucking you, dope. You it is. It's TV really show. cool. I'm not, I'm not trying to say it's like useless. It's actually a lot of fun and silly. But like awesome. the Punisher is not about subtlety. He's supposed to be about like, fuck the justice system and fuck these people. His name is The Punisher. But not Child Pornography. This is what you watch him for. And he's, I, I don't like this when I, I go on Reddit and people are say, well, that's how he is. You know, he's not a hero. He's an anti-hero. I mean, you, call, you can call him whatever the fuck you want. He's a hero to me. He only fights evil, right? He isn't going around shooting kids in the face. But that was just really out of character. It looked weird. The whole season. So did he punish him at all? Did he punish this they, child pornographer at all? Yeah, he kind of spanking or anything. <laughs> yeah, he took photos of him after the girl <laughs> nags him like, oh, don't kill him. Let him go. He nags her that he should have killed him. And then she says, well, you can always burn down his studio. And then that's all they do is he doesn't. Oh, no, beat him something or... he can fucking replace. Oh, yeah. dear. With his child <laughs> porn Bitcoin money, he can just buy a new studio. How does that? I don't know. It just it wasn't the same thing. But I love I love the Punisher as a. I think, I don't know who the hell wrote that character, but I think John Bernthal's acting is a bang-up job. I fucking love it. I agree. I think it's a really good depiction of the Punisher up until he's, like, letting child pornographers go and shit. I hate that I, theme where it's, uh, if you kill this person, you're just like them. Oh, That's my yeah. least favorite trope in movies, comics, See, games, terrible, anything. Like, terrible trope. Mine, too. It, no, it's not the same thing. Killing a kitty pornographer isn't the same as doing it yourself, but... Also, 
in Daredevil, <laughs> he stood up for himself. He was like, fuck you, I don't need your help. You know what? I killed those people because I loved it and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to kill them all. I like that. That's why we like the Punisher, right? He's like, I'm going to kill him. And no, now he's just constantly, you know, second But when you say it like that, it doesn't, sound, it doesn't sound like he's killing from a perspective of doing good. It sounds like he just enjoys killing. He's supposed, I don't know the no, he's supposed like he to be. He's the supposed the to be like this extremely... A uh, tight moraled guy who loves killing, but he only kills within that set of morals. Well, he has a reason. Uh, do you know his backstory, Jackson? No, I don't. So his backstory is that he's a war veteran. He comes back home after God knows how many years of serving. And the day he comes home, somebody like the secret organization, governmental, whatever, the Illuminati <laughs> kills his wife, son and daughter. Just for fun. So I had to cover yeah. up some other shit. I think they get caught in a crossfire or something i don't exactly remember but point his family dies and he starts hunting down everybody who's responsible so that's it he's like hunting down cartel that's members. a pretty generic backstory yeah but point is he's again evil. jackson the punisher is not about subtlety <laughs> yeah it's not. it's not his character arc his character arc is fuck these guys i don't care about the law they deserve to be punished his, his backstory is yeah but i think that's baddies. just a pretty boring concept as well I don't know. The, concept- the same way you think <laughs> Batman not killing people is boring. I think that's boring when I don't think go Batman over the not- top and start breaking legs nah. and killing people. I mean, I don't. I don't know if you're talking to me on that. I think Batman not killing people is fun. I think that's a cool little thing they have to write with. No, even Batman is. I, look, I. I just. I. I really like some of the writing in these shows. I've been shitting on Netflix for having 27 Marvel cartoons, not cartoons, but like comic book based. Uh, TV series, you know, but now I kind of sort of get it because some of this is cool. John, he nails, uh, you know, acting the Punisher. I really, I'm sorry, I'm got a crush on this guy now, but <laughs> yeah, you, you just love John. I, that's I, I all do, I've heard. Please, po- that's I the just, only positive thing I've heard. I just want a John interview series. I want them to compile every interview ever done with John. <laughs> no, just all for me. I just want him to have like a YouTube channel where he plays the Punisher and just kills people. A Ooh. compilation, like a fucking Bukaki porn where he just kills people instead of all the drama that we have to sit through all the writing. It's no what I was trying to say is he his acting is really, really good. Like he has these ten minute monologues about how he misses his family and this and that, about how he couldn't read his daughter the book that she wanted him to read for her and all that sort of stuff. I'm telling you, Daredevil is a really kind of a fun show to watch. Like the Kingpin. The Kingpin is also fun. Fisk is you, great. I saw I, I saw Fisk's entire segment. Fisk is a fantastic villain. He, That's Charlie, Kingpin, I, I think it? you might. Uh, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, not Fisk, but Kingpin. That Whatever, is I Fisk. forgot what is that it. That is Fisk. Yeah, Kingpin is. Yeah, the same person. Wilson oh, okay, Fisk. Okay. They don't refer to him as Kingpin until season three. But Kingpin, Charlie, did you also grow up with the Spider-Man animated show? I didn't really watch it, but it was around. Yeah. Yeah, in that one, Kingpin was this. You know, goofy, fat, big bad guy. Basically, that was just yeah, his. Yeah, he's he, he's a big fat ass. He's really bald and really fat and just super ridiculous. strength. Yeah, so. super yeah, strength. He's got super but strength. He was very cartoony, where he would you know build gigantic robot spiders to kill Spider Man and all that <laughs> sort of stuff. Well, how else are you gonna do it <laughs> in, uh, in Daredevil? I love. He had that monologue where he was telling this story from the Bible or something, where it was like a. Uh, Oh, yeah, see, in Daredevil, there's something about like breadcrumbs or some shit, like an offering bread to Jesus, oh. and how the villagers wouldn't do it. And then he was like, uh, then one guy <laughs> did it, and he's like, I wasn't the guy that gave him the bread; I was the evil or some shit. <laughs> it was a great monologue. And Daredevil, what I like, they went in a different direction. He isn't this big goofy comic book villain. He's a criminal mastermind, and they keep developing his character over the seasons. Where. Yeah, you're like, wow, this guy's actually really smart. This is fun watching him rise to power. This is interesting. He's a cool character. They did that in the Spider-Man game as well. He was a like the <clears throat> mob guy, basically. Yeah. Like he was this big, big personality in the game where he was controlling everything up until the point where Spider-Man puts him in jail. Yeah. In which case he's useless. Well, no, up until the point where Spider-Man puts him in jail and he hulks out and breaks his fucking desk in half <laughs> with his bare hands because they had to work in that cartoony super strength somehow. Well, he's he's super strong in this one, too, but you, you don't see that as much as him plotting the downfall of his enemies in these clever ways and he's manipulating everybody into serving him. That's kind of cool. I really like that. Again, I think he should. He deserves a show of his own. This, 
do we know anything about what the fuck is Disney doing? Are they gonna move all these shows to their own streaming service or are they gone for good? It seems I that way. I think they are, yeah. Well, any successful uh, TV series, I imagine, move, move over to their new service when it's created. But mm -hmm. I, I think Daredevil's been just outright cancelled, right? There's no well, way no, that's returning. But they've, the, the joke is that Netflix keeps cancelling all of the Marvel shows. I think... So they cancelled... Let's see. They cancelled the Iron Fist. They cancelled <laughs> Luke Cage. They cancelled Daredevil. And now the rumor has it they're going to cancel Punisher too. So... I don't know, the Marvel just has a reputation for cancelling all of their shows after the second or third season. Which is a bummer because the re I don't know how many views or clicks they get, but the reviews are pretty good. Everybody is lo everybody loved Daredevil season 3. It was a good season. I'd be okay with it if it meant they all showed up in the next Avengers movie. Mm. Yeah, that would be such a clusterfuck. Uh, yeah, that's why I want it. It already feels... Well, here's the it already thing. Feels Pretty busy. They could make it work well, though, because in the previous Avengers, and I'm going to spoil a, a year old movie by now, <laughs> um, half the more than half the cast dies. And I think it'd be cool if you do the next one and it's like, OK, Tony Stark, Captain America are alive. They got to lead a new team who's left to fight Thanos and they get like Daredevil. They get Luke Cage, Power Man, all that shit. I think that'd be I think that'd be a kind of cool Power concept. Man? That's Luke Ooh, Cage's uh, name. The Wizard. They need the wizard. Yeah. They get the super B team to fight Thanos because <laughs> yeah. that's the only people left alive. I think the that'd Bollywood be sweet. team. Blue yeah. Beetle and Booster Gold. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're, they're DC. Yeah, they're DC. But you get, you get what I'm saying. I'd love to see that in Avengers. They have to round up the fucking worst of the worst that they have left. Ooh, I, I, I like actually that, really actually. like that concept. Yeah. They get, like, imagine, like imagine they, they do a... Uh, they do a fucking cameo where they knock on the X-Men mansion and Deadpool's in there and he's just like, nah, I don't want to do it. And he just slams the door in their face. Like, I, I'd love that where they have to go around picking up all the heroes that no one cares oh, about. Oh, that would be cool. That'd be awesome. I would, I mean, yeah. they would fuck him up too. They'd be far more effective than Captain America using a shield and tossing it around. Look, I, my dream team it would be Deadpool, if he stopped cursing so much, uh, John Wick and The Punisher. I know John Wick isn't Marvel, but <laughs> <laughs> just making John Wick's adventures. <laughs> uh, that's not necessarily true. John Wick was in Fortnite, and so was Thanos. That's pretty close. They are part of the same universe now. <laughs> the mm -hmm. Fortnite universe. Yeah. Oh, good. The Fortnite, <laughs> Fortnite, Fortnite expanded universe. They're going to be in a Shonen Jump Force soon, fighting Naruto and Goku. <laughs> to, to quickly uh, admit something, wrap it up though. Since we have shoutouts today, I was I was thinking of sneaking in my own Punisher fan fiction since I love the show so much. Much, but season two kind of knocked it out of me, so I couldn't do it. No, oh, that's oh. a loss to Bernthal's collection of fanfic. Yeah, please, Mr. Bernthal, please come on the show. Well, Kaya, if you've had the wind knock out of your sails there, you might need to find a nice place to sit down, mm, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Well, I can give you a great recommendation if you're if you're interested in hearing it. What could I do, Andrew? Well, you could go to Joybird and check out a revolution in online furniture shopping. Joybird believes that you should never have to settle when it comes to your home furnishings, and there is always freedom to be boldly original. Joyburn will get you a one-of-a-kind furniture experience made to your unique taste, featuring quality handcrafted furniture, with each piece being made with care and precision, with high-quality hardwood and responsibly sourced materials. If you purchase Joybird, you can get a 365-day home trial which means that you can skip the furniture shore, store and bring the showroom home so you can sit on it, sleep on it, break it in, do whatever you would do on a nice little sofa or other piece of furniture. And if you don't like it, send it back for a full refund. I mean, what do you, like, seriously, try it out. And if you like it, then it works for you. And if you don't, you don't need to keep it. You can see how Joyburn is revolutionizing online furniture shopping. And you can also create the furniture that brings you joy today at joybird.com slash official. And if you go to that link, you can receive up to 25% off of your first order by using the code official. That's joybird.com slash official. Charlie, I believe you and I both have Joybird furniture, and I gotta say, I am a fan. I'm also a fan. The couch is extraordinarily comfortable. He's got one in his bedroom next to his bed. 
And let me let me tell you something. Sometimes when he's sleeping, and I just I need somewhere to just watch him and wait for him to greet the day as the sun peeks in <laughs> through the curtains on his bright, <laughs> handsome face. I just pop up there, I grab his dog Tetra, and we just we relax on his Joybird sofa, and it is a comfortable experience. Joybird.com slash yeah. <laughs> Joybird.com slash official. 25% off of your first order. Check it out. To quickly before we uh, get off of the superhero train, if we if we are at all, uh, I googled Booster Gold because I I thought I recalled that he was gonna be starring in a new movie, which turns out to be fake. But one of the top questions is is Booster Gold Rip Hunter's dad? <laughs> and Rip I was Hunter's wondering, Rip Hunter. I, I have no idea, but this whole like group of outcasts have the <laughs> best fucking goofy names I've ever heard. So according to the answer that someone gave is Rip Hunter, Booster's boss, a mysterious time master who refuses to reveal his identity, who is later revealed to be Booster Gold's future son. His father is still unaware of his parentage. The Booster Gold series... Sounds fucking incredible. This is like the Harry Potter universe for superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Rip Hunter is a time master who's apparently Booster Gold's future son or some shit. Uh, this is amazing. It's a very intricate universe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rip Hunter. God, what would all right? What would your name be if you were part of the B team of superheroes? So uh, you, you had to sound Dick Handsome. Dick, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one a lot. <laughs> Dickheads. I would. I'm gonna go with flex big arms, hmm. and I'd have super strength. Uh, My dick's is really handsome. Raw thunder hide. Shock rock vein. <laughs> no, that's great. Hey, I like how all of us. We all had one prepared. Yeah, <laughs> like we, we truly do form the revenges. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're the uh, discount toys that you see in the dollar store <laughs> under the Chinese bootlegs. Shitty GI Joe team. <laughs> we'll get you, Cobra Commander. Yeah, the bootlegs of the bootlegs. <laughs> Sometimes I like cheesy the revenge names, sirs. like Storm Shadow. I know it's so juvenile, but I'm into it. Oh yeah, fucking Transformers and GI Joe. Let me tell you what they what they didn't have in animation quality. They absolutely <laughs> made up for in character design. <laughs> Fucking Star Scream. Oh, I love that name. I don't care what oh, anybody I love, says. I love their names. Star They're Scream. so great. Soundwave. Soundwave. Star Scream is Optimus. the kind of name you'd even call. The main, you'd... Even the main character is called Optimus Prime. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. <laughs> it's such a great name. See, the Star Scream is the kind of name where if you saw it in a girly TV show, you'd hate it. Like if it was a My Little Pony. Because, you know, they oh, have yeah. Twilight oh, Sparkle yeah. and Starscream sound like they're two ponies in that show. But once you make it a car, jet, whatever the fuck hybrid, it's kind of cool. I think he's a I think he's a uh, I think he's a jet fighter. Whatever the I hell. Believe, I don't give a shit. Even cooler. <laughs> he's a robot that makes him cool. <laughs> <laughs> he's a kill bot. I mean, I, I kind of I kind of one thing I miss from like 80s trends is in big action stuff. Everyone just having a stupid, ridiculous name. But at the same time, you know immediately if they're good or bad. Like Cobra <laughs> Commander. There's no way in fuck good. a man named Cobra no, 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 Commander no, no, no. is a good guy. No, that's not true. Well, yeah, but then one of the good guys is called Snake Eyes. Fuck. Right? Yeah, I thought wait, I thought Snake Eyes was a bad guy too. No, he's fighting on the good guy's side. He's not? Oh, he has fuck. a Okay. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. He has the bad counterpart though, the opposite ninja who's Storm Shadow. Also cool name. That's what God, I was such thinking. A cool of, name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love those names so much. I know. <laughs> <laughs> just when everyone was a big idiot, it was just stupid adjective and then cool noun, and that was your name. <laughs> like, Why have I never come across anyone in real life with those kinds of names? It's real life is a cartoon. No one's called oh, yeah. the Iron <laughs> Fist in real life. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Too. That's my problem. Someone do it. We need more people with their name legally changed to Iron Fist. I'll say again, God, I'm going to get so much shit for shitting on Daredevil, but his name being, everybody refers to him of the devil of Hell's Kitchen. I'm just sitting there thinking like, oh, the devil? You mean the guy who lets everyone go? He's the devil? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you, God, you wouldn't that understand. Is, that 
is one thing that I never really got about Batman having the same problem where all in the lore, like the lower level thubs are always like, it's the freaking bat. Oh, oh, he's so scary. Oh, intimidation. But he never kills anybody. And they always well, I don't want to get out of prison. Still yeah, I don't want to get my ass beaten either. I'd be like, oh, shit, I'm about to get my ass fucking kicked <laughs> yeah, in by this way, meat hammer. The way he might not put me in prison, but he'll fucking paralyze that's, me. That's true. <laughs> I don't that's, want that. You know, actually fair, because I do remember in a lot of lore, the villain the thugs when they're in jail they're always like yeah he gave me six broken ribs and a fractured <laughs> wrist and this and that so you know what? i will rescind my uh, my criticism see that's it, fair it, but i would be scared too no look the daredevil obviously he does hurt his opponents but most of them he just he kind of punches into a wall and that's it he knocks them out and lets them go he doesn't even deliver them over to the police or something although there's there was this one guy he throws off of a rooftop and all that and then one of the one of his sidekicks is like, well, Daredevil, you like, you know, you don't kill people, but this this guy you beat up last week, he's in a coma now. Like they told him that he was brain dead or something. So the Daredevil, <laughs> upon hearing that he basically turned a guy into vegetable, goes, yeah, well, but I didn't kill him, did I? Well, I mean, <laughs> would have been better. <laughs> yeah, really. You're not good. Yeah, you have fate worse than death. That's the thing that a lot of superheroes glance over. It's like, how do you even know that they live... Like, like Batman or Daredevil or Spider-Man or any of those, they'll show up and with a glove, like a secret superhero glove filled with concrete blocks, they'll punch them square in the face and be like, that surely <laughs> just knocked him out. <laughs> they, they don't, like, they don't so think about it. In the strength, yeah. yeah, they don't think about it for two seconds. Like <laughs> they, they hold him over a building to interrogate him and fucking drop them on their back. And it's like, you don't know if he's going to be paralyzed or you've severed his spinal cord and he's bleeding out internally. <laughs> you don't no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, they never check on this shit ever. That's I guess I gotta give respect to the Punisher because at least he doesn't fucking care. <laughs> <laughs> he admits it. Hey, he does. Yeah, he just puts him down. He doesn't fucking let him die in a hospital <laughs> two weeks later of spinal exactly. cord damage or something. Exactly. Oh, uh, okay. So let's what, switch up. What the, do you want though? Do you want Batman to just be stalking their Facebook pages for updates no, on their lives? No, I mean it's it's obviously more exciting and fun when it's just like, yes, I snapped his neck. He'll be out cold for a while. But like, I I don't know. I I, I want maybe at least some stories to explore more realistic takes. Well, I think isn't it could that be interesting. One of the biggest. Um, one of the biggest movie sins is when a guy knocks out another guy with like the butt of his gun, like hits oh, him at yeah. the back of the head and the guy's knocked out for 10 minutes. Whereas in real life, it's a really bad sign if the guy's out for more than five seconds or something. You could just yeah. be dead. <laughs> I actually I actually uh, looked into this a while ago because I was curious. I was like, if you want to knock someone out in real life, like stealthfully, how do you do it? Because you can't just punch them. They'll make noise and not get knocked out. You can't like you don't want to kill them. And yeah. even if you don't have a how weapon, do you do that? I, I looked it up. Apparently, if you're according to some, I don't know, some army training or some shit, I could be wrong. But if you're approaching someone from the front and don't have something to incapacitate them with, you chop them in the throat. Because, they, because then they can't scream and then they're incapacitated. <laughs> I'm dead that serious. Like, that sounds like John Bernthal's guide to assassinations. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just really, but, you grunt and then you you take your sledgehammer and break their knees. <laughs> if you forgot your sledgehammer in the garage, you the two by four. You make sure but they can't run for help. That's how you do it. You you Chump hit them uh, you hit him in the fucking throat <laughs> because then they can't scream for help and I mean if I got hit in the throat by a burly man I'd be out. I'm imagining you doing that to stop them from making noise. So exactly. you chop them in the throat and they start trying to scream, <laughs> but they can't scream, but then they start flailing about and knocking over yeah, shit, can, making just as can, much noise cuz they can't they scream. Can still obviously you follow it up alarm. like you but, uh, no, you obviously follow it up. You chop them in the throat, and then when they're incapacitated, so instantly they can't scream. Then you can get behind them and choke them out, or hold them down, or whatever. Shoot them, but doesn't but it just the, blow it all? Yeah, but that's the that's the initial maneuver. You you suppress their ability to call for help. So do you karate chop them? Like I, is it I don't know the specifics, the but he was just like, yeah, you just slap them in the throat. It's an <laughs> iron fist. The Sin Lord Chasmagor <laughs> special. Didn't that collapse their windpipe or something and kill them anyway of suffocation this time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, that's the risk you take.
All right, so uh, let. Here's how you do it silently. You just decapitate them with your hand. Just <laughs> yeah, straight through. Yeah, cut their head off eventually <laughs> when you reach a certain level. <laughs> just keep wailing just on keep it. Bashing, you, just keep you, chomping. Using your literal iron fist, you start meticulously sawing their head off with the palm of your hand. <laughs> <laughs> just Vulcan death grip them. <laughs> Uh, you you want to grab their throat with both hands and twist and turn until their head pops off like a Pez dispenser. Yeah, like a child safety lock. You push it down and then screw <laughs> off. <laughs> That'll incapacitate them for uh, yeah. a while. It will for sure. They'll be out for a little bit. Hunt down their children, too. While you're at it, just make sure you have as much leverage on them as pass possible so they can't pull the fire alarm or something as they're dying and taking their last breaths. <laughs> All right, so before people rightfully bukkake us with comments about how we've been talking about Daredevil for 30 minutes, let's change topics. I've been in Turkey for the first week of uh, New Year's, so I didn't get any Christmas presents or anything. So I came back and last oh. week my sister gave me my belated Christmas present, which was a book on autism. <laughs> <laughs> She must listen to the podcast. She knew. Yeah, she always knew. I, <laughs> Your secret's out. I don't. She even. Uh, she even did you a big, a big, nice little favor, and she cut out your face and put it on all the pictures in the book too. She highlighted all the relevant portions to you personally. Oh, it's a fucking, it's a, she. She. She underlined it with a fancy pen and wrote "Love this" with hearts on the eyes. Oh, uh, see. Okay, here's the thing: when you give someone, don't get don't give people books for Christmas. Jesus, don't give them... Books are not a good gift, people, okay? It's like... People like no, books. Yes, not anymore. They like people like books, books that they the pick 20s. themselves. Giving somebody a book is like giving somebody homework for their presents. That's <laughs> just bad. Like, they're gonna keep asking you if you've read it yet. I don't feel like reading this. It's boring. It's a 500-page book without any photos, by the way, about autism. I'm not... I don't care. <laughs> Is that any photo? Ideals. <laughs> Did you scroll I, through it trying to find a photo? I mean, on the upside, Kaya, you don't. Even if you don't read the book, she sent a powerful message. Yeah, she did. Yeah, <laughs> big, big yeah. fuck you. You know what I got her is a Kindle. <laughs> fuck me, I guess, for being a good bro. And I got her a Kindle, and I got her a gift gift code so she could pick her own books herself and and such. You know, and read in bed, and she gives me homework so I can read about my own <laughs> autism, which. Thank you, sister. But, you know, I, I'm dealing with it. I can cope. I don't need this book. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I love that. I didn't that. need that That's big great. slap. <laughs> I like to imagine. Oh, power move. Yeah, she was waiting for you at the German airport with, like, open arms and an autism book in one hand. Oh, she gave it to me, like, last week at a, a, when she called me over for dinner. It, it's just, like, it, I don't know if they, it's like if I came out and she gave me a book on how to be gay. It's... I don't need this. I know I have Pornhub. <laughs> just why? I don't know. She's just her. Since her kid yeah, has I been diagnosed a, with autism, I guess she's now she's drawing those parallels that I hope don't go too far. Well, maybe she's just trying to make you into a good father figure for her son. <laughs> He's a like, fucking father. <laughs> what the fuck? What is this Game of Thrones? <laughs> <laughs> You're the backup father. You're the booster gold of the father there. Yeah, I'm the I'm the fucking autistic uncle. Woo. Well, now you can bond, apparently. Yeah, now you got something to talk about. I want to bond. You I got, great uncle. got the little bastard at keyboard. Talk to this three-year-old yeah. kid about his autism. Sure, you like being <laughs> autistic? <laughs> if you turn to page 80, you'll see some real... It ain't that yeah, bad. Yeah, Kaya, maybe that's in the book in page 45, Conversations for Other People with Autism. How to start? Oh, we, yeah, whoopee. That's just <laughs> what I want to talk about with a five-year-old who I don't want to talk about with about anything, frankly. <laughs> I, <laughs> you done with those action figures yet? It's my turn. I'm autistic. <laughs> 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 you call him a bigot for not letting you use yeah. his, uh... I want to play with Stone Shadow. You're a fucking bigot. <laughs> he doesn't accept me for who I am. <laughs> Why isn't your son more progressive? Give a, I'm going to get him a book. <laughs> yeah, make the kid read the fucking book. Why are you giving it to me? I, I already have like a bucket list of 100 books that I've yet to read. I, don't, I can't even, I can't be bothered to read my own books. What made you think I'm going to read your book on autism? God, just so dumb. <laughs> oh, boy. Give me, give me a fucking bottle oh. of whiskey. That's all I want. Just don't give me books. 
<laughs> oh man. <laughs> Numb the pain, please. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, Kaya, what you're saying, what you're saying is getting you a book for Christmas was not a smart idea. You know, you know what else is not smart, though, Kaya? Using job boards that send you candidates that aren't even qualified for the role that you posted. It's about as not smart as getting people books for Christmas. Ooh. But you know what is smart? Going to ZipRecruiter.com slash official to hire the right person. <clears throat> unlike other oh, yeah. unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter finds qualified candidates for you. It's powerful matching technology scans thousands of resumes to identify people with the right skills, education, and experience, and actively invites them to apply for your job so you can get qualified candidates fast. ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers all over the U.S., and this rating comes from hiring sites on Trustpilot with over a thousand reviews tell them about it charlie zip recruiter is a great place to find a job and find people for a job there's nothing more efficient we've all used it ourselves and i think all of us can say with certainty that it is a fine service that is correct so you can try zip recruiter for free at jackson ZipRecruiter.com slash official. If you love this show, you can show your support to it and to ZipRecruiter by going to Jackson one more time. ZipRecruiter.com slash O-F-F-I-C-I-A-L. That's official. ZipRecruiter.com slash official. Mm. ZipRecruiter <laughs> is the smartest way to hire. All right. Ooh, a little bit of teamwork there. Yeah, yeah nice. we work together. Kaya, I'm pulling you in on the last one because you're, uh, oh, shit. you're the only one who hasn't helped All right, yet. Cut me some slack, though. I'm autistic, apparently. <laughs> As everybody likes to point out. He doesn't like reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have just acted hyper autistic. I, well, I can't read this book, dummy. That's not what autistic yeah, people sound like. All. <laughs> I flushed it down the toilet, sister. I didn't know what to if, do. If you wanted to act autistic, you should have looked at her and said, "I don't know what a well, I don't know what emotion to feel right now," and just say that to everything she says. That's I feel like that's more of a psychopath move than autistic. I don't know what the hell autists do. I don't want to look like Chris Chan. Maybe you should read the book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it's like a how-to guide on how to be autistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a help with autism book. It's a how-to autism Jesus, book. I gotta, I gotta get her back. Like on her birthday, she's getting a how to be a cunt book. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I guarantee what, what you, did, you can find something like that at some fucking joke store or something. What a drastic what? decline in uh, Christmas quality gifts. You get her a Kindle and a, like, a gift card, and then next year it's a You're a Slut book or oh. something. <laughs> Yeah, Andrew, yeah. Andrew, that's a brilliant idea. What? How to be a cunt book, and then yeah. you just open the book and it's a mirror. It's mm. just a mirror. <laughs> I, like I like that a lot, actually. Yeah. yeah. Trademarked official. That's fantastic. You, you can find little... it on our merch store. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. I, think, I think you just revolutionized Hot Topic with that one, Jackson. Or it'll be a birthday card. I'll see what I can do. Oh, actually, <laughs> it would actually be a birthday card. Do they make edgy birthday cards? No, yeah. oh, I doubt it. Like, I know that they make like they make like regular Hallmark birthday cards and then they make pseudo edgy birthday cards where it's like, I heard you wanted a nice ass for your birthday and you open it up and it's a picture of a donkey and they're like, happy birthday. Enjoy your ass. How's that edgy? <laughs> but that's Hallmark edgy. That's uh -oh. pseudo edgy for for a 90 year old grandma. That's that's like pushing the needle there. Uh, but, uh, I was thinking I'm, I'm like saying, happy I'm wondering, cancer. And just photo of a well, no, that's what I'm asking. Do oh. they, that's what I'm asking. Do they make like fuck you greeting cards out there? Like Hallmark's like, oh, you, sure. sorry, you have cancer. And then you open it and just says, just kidding or something like that. Yeah, like, sure. like a big old fuck you card and this and that. I'd love those. Somebody must must be making those. I guess maybe I, I just want like the official Hallmark stamp on them, though. I want the official like, stamp on them. <laughs> yeah, made by us. If she gave those away. <laughs> Do people even use cards anymore? Did she give you a card with a book, for example? Because I haven't used a card in no, forever. I don't, I don't know who the hell gives cards, to be honest. It seems like the... I don't really like you that much, but, you know, I don't even I don't even like you that much to open up a phone and wish you a happy birthday in person kind of a gift. Are you talking to me right now? <laughs> yeah. He's talking in general, I think. I, uh, no, I'm talking about specific. I think gift it, uh... cards. Like, I've never received a gift card in my life, I don't think. 
I think in this modern age, greeting cards are just an excuse to hold money when you give a gift. Oh, like I, yeah, I didn't probably. want to slip you an actual hundred dollar bill, so here's a little mm, thing yeah. to hold it. Make it look a bit professional. Yeah, exactly. Make it make it look like it's not just hey, I didn't know what to get you, or hey, have some money. You know what I mean? Was there a twenty in the autistic? No, book? there was. There was fucking <laughs> nothing. Buy some candy. <laughs> there was fucking nothing in it. Damn, it's a sad, it's a sad Christmas. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got Christmas. insulted for Christmas, everybody. Woo! Yay! <laughs> Santa came flinging the zingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that wasn't even wrapped, by the way. I always wrap my presents because I've never... <laughs> it wasn't even wrapped? No. <laughs> it was a, Oh my god! Wasn't it a late... Wasn't it a late Christmas present? She had all the time in the world really? to wrap it. Yeah, she had all the... When did you came back? When? The 20th? Of January? No, I, well, I, I came back like on the 6th or something. I don't know. The 5th. Even better. But yeah, yeah, no. I, not impressed. Not impressed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, did she actually say that it was your Christmas gift? Or did yes. she just go, oh, hey, you might like this? No, she said it. Wow. Does your sister, like, I don't mean to impose, but does she love you? I don't know. Because this... This sounds really, really dark. I, I mean, when it's all said and done, it's probably... Well, did you get anything from your brother? No. That's probably a better gift, actually, then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just mutually ignoring. Just a mutual ceasefire <laughs> is better. <laughs> and this passive-aggressive, hey, you're retarded. Loving grenades. <laughs> uh. Oh, my God. What are uh, what are some shitty gifts you boys have received in general besides this? Ooh, um, hmm. Jackson, do you have anything? And, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm thinking. I'm I'm really. I'll thinking. go ahead and uh, start. Uh, one year, my my mom. So my mom loves giving gifts. So she'll like buy them throughout the year and then hoard them in the garage. And then you know when Christmas time comes around, everyone gets like thirty things each, even if most of it is just whatever. Uh, I think. The standout in my mind for the one where I didn't want it at all is Tim McGraw's cologne. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What did that smell like? Tim McGraw. <laughs> what does Tim McGraw smell like? Country Gamer. Western music. <laughs> Tim McGraw is a famous country singer, and apparently at some point he made cologne. So I, I have a bottle of his I've... somewhere at my parents' house. Uh. Yeah. I, it's I, just sweat extracted from Tim oh. McGraw. <laughs> I, I actually yeah. just thought of one as well that jogged my memory. I got a bumper, or not a bumper, excuse me, a license plate one year. I don't remember who gave it a to me. It gave me like a license. Pl yeah, like one of those, um, not like an actual license plate, but the frame. Oh, was it like I, a vanity it, one or like a fun one? No, it was just like a black license plate frame. Just what a the frame? What's that? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's, that's lazy. I don't remember who got me that. It was probably one of my cousins. Ugh. Uh. Yeah, I could remember being extremely underwhelmed. <laughs> Jackson, Kaya. Oh, I just, I spent 10 minutes talking about it. Let's not. Yeah, but I want you to talk about it again. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow, well, yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, had, I've had useless gifts. Like, people have bought me stuff like Tupperware containers it's useful. or whatever. Which is, that yeah, is, is useful. useful. You're being uh, yeah, a I meant, I meant brat. useful. Shut up, Jackson. That's a lovely. I meant, I meant useful, but not exciting. Uh, but I haven't had a downright, yeah. I mean, a downright I get, bad gift. Now that I'm an adult, I get <laughs> useful gifts all the time, like just storage containers and little bits here and there. I got, I, I fucking got socks once, and I was happy. Yeah, socks are good. Yeah, socks are great when they're nice, warm, fuzzy socks for the winter. It's like I'm like, fuck yeah, this is fantastic. I'm talking about well, like, even that cologne. Even that cologne is useful. It is, but no. out of everything, I, if someone invades your house, you can throw it on them and then light them on fire to, and stuff like to that. To be fair, my my parents both love me and know a lot about me. But like out of oh, all the gifts I ever got, bragging. that was at the. <laughs> 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 well, out of all the you. gifts I got, though, that was the one where I was like, you know, I just I don't want this at all in any way. Ooh, everybody look at Andrew. He has a dad. <laughs> Humble brag. I mean, I wouldn't even call I wouldn't even call that cologne bad. That's not a bad cologne's not a bad gift. Yeah. Come on. Kind of is. You don't want to smell like what somebody else thought you should smell yeah. like. Especially if it's your grandma. Like 
I don't want to smell like Tim McGraw. Have you seen him? He wears a fucking cowboy hat with a tuxedo. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> I don't know. Rich Texans. Yeah. Well, rich Texans are different because they have that big white ass white hat that like goes with their southern style suit. But Tim McGraw wears like like he's got this signature cowboy hat he wears and it just it just does not go with any. I think anything ever. Mm. It's it's like a porn, a gay porn cowboy hat where you would see one of the guys getting fucked in the ass wearing it and nothing else. Mm. I, I know from experience. Mm. But anyway. So uh, <laughs> quickly go over, Charlie, I don't know if you kept up with this. Whatever happens with the Gearbox CEO getting sued for being a child molester it's, or something? What is that about? It's, on, it's ongoing, but he has an ironclad defense that the porn that he was carrying wasn't underage porn, and he was only carrying it because he was learning magic tricks from it. Mm, like Wait, really? Spitting mm. ping pong balls out of underage vaginas? Like what magic trick? So uh, he went on a podcast called The Piff Pod, which <laughs> has far more interruptions than our podcast could ever possibly have. Uh, it, I, it was an insufferable episode to sit through. And he eventually was able to squeak out enough sentences to form a story in between getting an interrupted. And the story was he uh, back in the day, back in like the 2011 era, I think it was or something like that. He would uh, put a bunch of his work onto a uh, USB stick and one night he was watching porn he didn't disclose where or anything and he was on cam girl sites and there was some cam girl called only 18 is what he called her and she was uh, giving herself an orgasm and then she ejaculated or she ejaculated so much fluid that Randy Pitchford could only explain it as a magic trick mm. so he didn't have enough time to figure out how she performed this magic this magic trick like where the turkey baster was so he bought the video <laughs> put it on the US put it on the USB stick and then he eventually left that USB stick at a medieval times restaurant so i don't know why he's carrying porn around to his meal locations but he left it there and some kid found it, found the porn, and now we have this story going on. And his explanation was that he only downloaded that one porn video, it was the only one on there, because he wanted to see how she performed the magic trick. And he, <laughs> he does me... disclose the secret. He's, he said she used multiple camera angles and uh, sleight of hand to get all of the fluid in her vagina. But to that, Randy Pitchford, that's impossible because cam sites, cam girls, only use a fixed camera angle so you're lying i know you're lying that's, Randy. that's so not let true me, hang on I've let seen, me let me get uh, let me get an idea here the no girl, it's an it was an amateur cam girl jackson like with was a webcam. the was the girl found to be uh, over 18 that's that's up for debate okay for debate but he called it barely legal porn <laughs> i thought i mean barely legal is still legal like they could be 18 mm -hmm. years so it's a whole genre. so yeah. What, yeah here's here's my point on it though if she does in fact turn out to be 18 years old or older why the fuck wouldn't he just admit he was watching porn? Yeah. Well, he did. That that was his that was his plan cuz he did this the day after the lawsuit came out where it alleged he had the underage porn at the Medieval Times and he not only confirmed that he did indeed leave porn at the Medieval Times and such, but then he says like it was, you know, I could see why people thought it was underage because the girl was so very barely of age or some shit like that. So I guess his defense was, yeah, oh, this totally happened. But, you know, she was actually of age. And I think that's what he was trying to get across with this weird story about magic tricks. Imagine but if this is all just like a marketing play for Borderlands 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, <laughs> he, so eventually some uh, some alternate reality game is going to come out where he leaves another flash drive. And he's like, oh, God, has anyone seen it at this location? <laughs> and it's a surprise trailer drop for Borderlands 3. <laughs> He also said he wanted to put that cam girl on the cover of his magic magazine. I guess he owns like a magic magazine. And he was so impressed with her uh, ejaculation trick that he wants her on the cover or some yeah, shit. Yeah, we all do let that Let me tell magic. you something. Yeah, let me, tell, <laughs> let me tell you something, though. He didn't own a magic magazine until this fucking lawsuit started coming up. Then he frantically <laughs> bought one. I have a magic trick for Randy Pitchford. I'll just come into my camera and he can figure out the method, I suppose. <laughs> 
<laughs> what a shitty excuse that's something a 13 year old would come up with like no mom she was like she was yeah i was trying to learn how to do card tricks and how to juggle and how to do pull a rabbit out of a hat and then a vagina on screen it's a virus you know exactly you know exactly <laughs> what it is right he got caught with it and he's pulling the old classic i have a virus I didn't no, open no, that. It was a virus. It wasn't me. That's I, not it. He did literally the exact opposite. Like, yeah, I opened that. I actually bought that. But no, what I, no, no, no. What I'm saying is he's just pulling the first excuse that came out of his ass and running with it and trying to put more and more into it as time goes on. Yeah. Well, he actually blamed his employees saw it uh, allegedly, according to him, and he blamed them for being so stupid to not uh, understand that he downloaded that for magic. <laughs> Like, okay. he was distraught that the first thought they had wasn't that the porn was on there for magic. <laughs> Jesus fucking yeah, He's a fucking weirdo, man. He's a fucking weirdo. But you know what isn't magic, guys? The fact that they are terrible at taking care of their health. There's no secrets. There's no magic behind it. There's no tricks. There's no wizardry. It is a known fact that guys are terrible at taking care of their health. Whether you get a knee injury, a bad back, or something even worse, guys are usually comfortable just rubbing dirt on things than seeing a doctor. I'll tell you boys something. I, uh, I'm guilty of this myself. When I was a little boy, I was playing tag at a, uh, at a functional family fun barbecue for my dad's company functional that he was working Functional family, at. huh? Bragging again. That's right. Yeah, That's bra- right. Yes. A fa- stop, stop bragging. My functional family at the family function. And I got, I got pushed accidentally while playing tag, and I uh, cracked my collarbone on a tree branch. And uh, let me tell you something. I was so keen on rubbing dirt on it that I cried for a very long time until my parents took me to the doctor. But the same thing can be said for guys and their erectile dysfunction. Studies show that 70% of men who experience ED don't seek treatment for it. Thankfully, Roman Health has created an easy way to get checked out by a doctor and get treated for ED online. Roman is a one-stop shop where licensed U.S. physicians can help diagnose ED and can ship the medication that you need right to your door. You can handle everything discreetly online. Free online visit getroman.com slash official. That's getroman.com slash official for a free online visit. Is it... Shall we do shoutouts? I think it's time. I believe Andrew has a big announcement regarding the shoutouts, if you'd like to share that with the world, Andrew. Sure, I I guess. I thought we were just... I didn't think we were announcing it on the episode. I thought we were just telling everybody. Yeah, it's like five (laughs) people. I don't think we have to dedicate this shout-out to them. So, boys and girls, this will be the last (laughs) hoorah for shout-outs, at least for a while. We, uh... Salute, boys. uh, There's there's a a good handful of reasons we're going this approach, and we're going to look into ways to making your patronage even more worthwhile. But for now, we are putting a hold on the shout-outs, and these reads will be the last ones. So let's, let's, with a nice drum roll and a hearty salute, let's... Let's get them underway. All right. Okay, well, I'll <laughs> Charlie, go. Charlie, you'll first. Yeah, I'll just start us off. And this is from Stoop Bunt P, historian of Peef Spogdar. Hello, boys. Not to flex too hard on everyone, but I have a sweet new gamer girlfriend, and we just built a Minecraft house together. So I guess you can say it's been hashtag epic year so far. Congrats, Peef. Mm, nice. Yeah. Have you guys ever had an internet <laughs> girlfriend, like, on a, on a video game? I just find it funny. He calls her a gamer girlfriend, and they don't even play Fortnite. They play Minecraft. No one plays Minecraft anymore. God. It's a bit old school. I think it's... Yeah, really. Like, God, their traditional gamer. Value. What's he playing next? The original Doom? Maybe The Sims 2? I, God. I had a RuneScape ga- uh, girlfriend. That was pretty cool. Really? Yeah. Wait. Yeah, but it, it was probably a dude. Just one of your gold. Probably Randy Pitchford. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, you had a RuneScape girlfriend back in the day? Uh, yeah, yeah, back when I was like 13 Aww. or so 12. Ew. That's so cute. Wait, younger than that. Yeah, that, younger than that. That's not cute. I didn't that's, know what to do. No, from the other person. Just don't. Guys, if you're if you're underage and somebody chats you up in a video game or a chat room, it's probably not a cute girl. It's probably creepy fuck who you usually would end up on how to catch a predator if Chris Hansen wouldn't have gotten himself arrested. Oh, I, I, I didn't send them my dick or anything. I didn't do anything. Uh, we just we just walked around and collected gold together. Aww. Aww. It was very romantic. You mean he said he was a girl so he could get more <laughs> yeah. of your gold for hey, nothing. Hey, 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 says the guy who was groomed in a hotel room by, what, a 20-year-old? I don't regret that. Uh, 24. I don't regret that at all, though. 
Man, yeah, yeah, they made if, a lot you're, more if you were 17 gold. and you fucked a 24-year-old chick, that'd be the coolest shit in the world. Yeah, that's you know fair. It. Uh, I'll do Dizzy's since it, so before it gets lost in the chat. Dizzy Mercury says, love you all, boys. Last shout out for a while. Check out my band on Facebook or SoundCloud or music streaming services. They are known as Tonic Freight Train. Thank you. Thank you, Dizzy. Dizzy. We love you. Check them out. Love you, Dizzy. Well, continuing on the music, then I'll take the next one. This is from Timothy the Bone. He says, hey, guys, please consider listening to my favorite record of all time, The Mollusk. By Ween, Dog Bless and Dog Speed. I think that's the album that Ocean Man comes from. It is. That's the album uh. that inspired. Um, who? What's his face? The guy Steven Hillenburg, the guy who made SpongeBob. He was inspired by that record to make SpongeBob. Actually, it's oh. a good record. It's nice. It's mellow. That they uh, they play some of it in the movie as well. Ah, the SpongeBob movie. Okay. I know that. Yeah. All right, there you mm -hmm. go. I've never I've never even heard of them, so I'll check that out. Thank you, Timothy. This one comes from Daniel Halfstone. Again, shout out to the magnificent boys on the podcast. <gasps> That's us. It has been a bit over two years since I started supporting you guys, and it's been worth every penny. Hoping 2019 goes well for us all, <laughs> and now shout outs are over. <laughs> poor, poor Daniel. <laughs> <And>, uh... <laughs> Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> well, we're going to find a way. If, if you have complaints, you can direct them at me. I don't mind talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, it was all Andrew's idea. It was not all my idea at all. That's the one I won't take the blame. But <laughs> if you guys want to hash it out, maybe have a rock talk about it, you can shit all over me. I will easily discuss it. But we're, we're working on ways to find a, a better way to reward you. Uh, this is from Deviant Predator. Good day, boys. I come seeking advice from all of you, mainly Andrew, because his standards for women are almost as low as mine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yes. Damn. Jesus. Fuck. Uh, I think I think your girlfriend's lovely. I, I love, love my girlfriend a lot. Sense. I think she's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> fuck <laughs> me. <laughs> I, uh, he says, I recently slept with a 46-year-old, and I'm 24, by the way, so do the math. Anywho, everything was okay until she let loose and squirted on my face. I don't know how to feel about it, especially because I used my parents' bed. Give me your guidance, boys. As oh, always, much fuck? love from the number one deviant. Why did you use your parents' bed? God, yeah, you brought like the... a woman who's as old as your parents to your parents' house. So uh, yeah. slept with a I, magician. I was... Is that it from the squirting? I I, <laughs> I had no problem with the 46-year-old part. I wasn't even concerned with the squirting part. But the fact you used your parents' bed, that's got your dad and mom's love juices already in it. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. That's disgusting. Ugh. Yeah. No, that's good hers. That's where you fucked up, man. Well, hang on. That's where she you said fucked she's up. like 40. Maybe that is his mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He left out some details. <laughs> 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 She's 46, I'm 24, you do the math. <laughs> She's mommy. <laughs> oh. The well, yeah, maybe that's out. what they meant, but, but yeah. Math. Seeing as he wanted my advice, the 46-year-old age is a number as long as they're over a certain standard. The squirting, I mean, some people like it, pretend you were blessed, but the, the parents' bed... Yeah, some, some, some people would pay to have exactly, someone squirt on their face. Exactly. So. The, the parents' bed, though, that's where you actually fucked up. Don't ever do that again. All right. This one comes from Brad Alpha Alpha. I'd love to spew some worms steaming autism all over this episode. Unfortunately, none of you are worthy. Uh, <laughs> my girl's art website is finally complete, so head over to atolls.net for some dank draws. You can buy prints, contact her for commission, or tell her how much you idolize her work. I don't really give a shit. I just need you to head over there, atolls.net. Thanks, boys. Fun fact, I've actually started streaming a lot in the past few weeks i don't know how long it's been now but um brad brad has joined in on the streams and uh i went and checked out atolls.net her art is fantastic boys it's really good high quality art i actually really recommend go going and checking it Spell out it. at atolls.net nice it's an actual recommendation a-t-o-l-l-z dot net All right it's fantastic this one comes from shaka lance Love what you guys are doing. Shout out to my mama for being awesome. Mm. Keep up the good work and see you next week. That's sweet. Uh, this is by Lyrical Jesus. He says, anybody can read this, so I will. What is up, official chads? It's your boy, Lyrical Jesus, finally participating in some official shit. It's been a long time, if you guys even remember back when I frequented streams. That's, that's a long time. 
since we had frequent streams. That is a long time. Yeah. Sorry really. for not checking them out lately. When? Which what? <laughs> what? <laughs> checking what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> checking the Blake stream. Yeah. The, the yeah. Blake stream. I got screen. bad news for I'll you. Forgive man. you. Uh, <laughs> you haven't missed anything. Don't worry. Life's been rough. Life's been rough, and so I've had to cut back on shit and put time into other shit. That's good. That's not bad, actually. I'll be sure to donate to Andrew's Twitch streams again if I'm ever rolling in, though. Anyway, February oh, is you. coming up, which means it's time to spread some love. So I'm gonna briefly say what I love about you guys. Oh, yeah. Aw. Feel free to read in Jack Aww. order if you want, because that's how I'm writing it. Uh, should I read all of this? Okay. Yeah. Jackson, I, it, yeah, I love how you don't set alarms during the show. Sorry. Jackson. <laughs> that was on the fucking shout out you, you, Jackson you put a lot of effort In editing shit and you can take a joke Keep on keeping man Keep Oh jeez I fucked that up sorry Keep on keeping on man Don't let oh. shit get you down While wow, my autism is <laughs> yeah, well, I, get the book. Get can you say book. it again as slow as I can tell? What does the book say? Break the glass, read the book. <laughs> Shit. That last <laughs> sentence really threw me off for some reason. Andrew, I like your sense of humor and really wish I could check your streams more. Make sure you go easy on yourself. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> you go too fast on your hard. streams, Andrew. I'm too hard. Are you so subtle? Are you okay? No, I'm great. I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm too self-deprecating. When the cam goes streams. on, yeah. the morals go <laughs> off. I'm probably too self-deprecating, uh, I guess. I don't know. Thank you, Jesus. That's very nice. Right. Charlie, you're the guy who started this all for me. Big shocker, I know. Been watching for years. Love your work. Okay. Kaya, Thanks I respect you as a fellow guy who is never wrong. I like that you're passionate about your stances on things, <laughs> as I am the same way. So stay cool, man. I like how... The compliments I get are always about how stubborn I am. <laughs> it's a defining feature. I can't. Well, your next compliments will be about how you're so relatable to the audience. <laughs> yeah, gotta, I really respect your autism. Get a shout out from Chris Chan. Like, oh, I know the multiverse <laughs> merged us. That's why you're just like me. Um, if any of you are ever so in New York, let me buy you guys a drink. And happy Valentine's Day. I'll take you up on that. I'm always down for a drink. Same thank you. That was that was sweet. All right. That was great. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Jesus. This last one comes from Luther Christian Aponte. Hey boys, today I have decided to share with you and the rest of the world a true story from my past. It's one of my worst stories, and I have only ever told a few select friends. But today is the day where I say fuck it. So here goes. Ooh, I'm excited. We get to join a very select few individuals, boys. I'm ready. When I was a junior in high school, I was seeing this girl. She was pretty cute and innocent. She was into the whole scene look and lived right across the street from the school. So during lunch, we'd just go to her house and chill, usually play games or something. She had told me before that she was a virgin and was kind of nervous about sex, so I didn't really push her to do it. And I was okay with that. I was pretty self-conscious about myself as well. Well, that all changed when one day... While we were chilling at her place, she looks up at me and asks me, when, I, when am I going to take her virginity? And before I even have time to process what she said and give a reply, she just says, how about right now? Let's do it now. <laughs> this caught me completely <laughs> off guard and I was totally unprepared for the moment, but I didn't want to look like a little pussy ass bitch, so I obliged. But then I realized there was one major obstacle. Her grandpa was asleep in the room right across from hers, and we didn't want to risk him waking up and walking in on us. So after a brief moment of planning, I did the only thing I could think to do. I snuck it. What? I snuck into her grandpa's room and took his fucking prosthetic leg from the bedside so he couldn't get out of bed. Not sure of what to do with it. I decided to take it into the room with us while we had sex. I just remember feeling so awkward and guilty afterwards that things just kind of broke off for a few weeks. Just looking at her filled me with this extreme discomfort and PTSD flashbacks of me taking forever to nut because the pussy was being overshadowed by the disembodied leg propped up against the wall just five feet away from us. I could feel God himself judging me in that very moment. Do I regret this? Well, if at least one person out there gets a kick out of this, then I'll say it was all worth it. Anyway, thanks boys. Keep up the good shit. God damn, that's a story and a half. That was a fantastic story. Yeah. 
That's some really quick thinking. That's like some John Berthal assassination mm. tactics, like chop the windpipe <laughs> and, and just steal the walk him, Chop him in the throat. I want to know if he did the walk of shame <laughs> back into the room and put the leg back. <laughs> it's his now. He owns it. As he took trophy. it home with him. Made the <laughs> grandpa still in the made bed the to grandpa. this day. <laughs> grandpa thinks he just got robbed. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, that's shout outs, boys. Yeah, thank you, Luther. That's the shout outs. All right. Uh, are we ra- wrapping Alrighty. up? Yeah, and that's the end of this week's so. episode. Thank you, everyone, for listening and sticking around. If you made it this far, we really appreciate it. If you want to, I was going to say, if you want to send in your shout out now, you can't. But if you want to head on over to patreon.com slash the official podcast, we've got a whole bunch of other rewards there, like bonus content. Um, yeah, I think if you like the show, go check it out. You mm-hmm. might find something you like. That's everything. Bye, everyone. We'll see you next week, boys and girls. Good night. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye.